Far left protesters and anti fascists stormed into Grand Central Station and protested, which is fine, but then started vandalizing public property, which is not fine. And I find it particularly funny they're demanding that the MTA, the metro system in New York, be free when it's literally a publicly funded system. I don't know what you think is going to happen. People are already paying taxes to support it, but they don't want any fare at all because poor people can't use it. And the primary reason for the protest is that people have been arrested for turnstile jumping because they can't afford the $2.75. The response from Antifa was to open the, the emergency exits, chain them open, pour glue into the machines, damaging public property. Because, you know, you know what I find so, so funny about this is, look, I get it. If it was privately owned and you wanted to nationalize it, I disagree. But this is literally publicly owned. It's like everybody uses it. The penalties for skipping out on it is because we are all pitching in to support the system. Oh, heavens, Tim Pool, the liberal capitalist reformer. But before we read the story and I show you all the vandalism and stupidity, I'll say a couple things first. Apparently, there's like a viral clip going around where the cops arrested one guy and he yells like my dad works for the court. Oh, go figure. Yes, yell to daddy. No, I'm sorry. If you commit a crime, break the law, you get arrested. And while I fully respect the right to protest, I'll shout out some criticism towards Rudy Giuliani. He said this was the, the, the city I worked to reform. And, he, and, and the image he posted was just general uproarious protest. Nah, I am totally 100 percent in favor of people getting signs and protesting and expressing their First Amendment rights. And I fully recognize as someone who worked for nonprofits, sometimes you get arrested doing this. Civil disobedience results in arrest because we have laws. If they're broken, you get arrested. But through that process, we've actually reformed a lot of things. So I think it's also fair that people get arrested when they obstruct public transit. But I respect the protest. I don't respect the vandalism. But what you see on the screen is one of the funniest things I've ever seen. I love it. So Andy Ngo tweets, fascist, 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 far left protesters yell in unison at a videographer, hashtag Antifa. And the videographer is none other than Luke Rudkowski, we are change, who's like basically an anarchist. He's like, I don't want to say he's like a total anarcho-capitalist, but he is like libertarian, far all the way to the bottom, center right, super anti-government to a ridiculous degree beyond libertarian. And they're calling him a fascist. <laughs> of all the people you're going to surround and scream at, you pick the weird dude who wants to live in Mexico spending bitcoins. Like, sorry, man, there's a bunch of like anarcho communists and capitalists all living down there and they pick out this guy. Let me tell you something. Let me give, we'll, we'll jump over to, to the, uh, the actual story here from the Daily Mail. Let me give you all some advice. Luke, if you ever find yourself at a protest and a bunch of people start chanting fascist at you, here's what you don't do. Don't look at them and yell, I'm not a fascist because they don't know who you are. What you do is you turn around and join them and start yelling fascist too, because these people don't know who they're yelling at. You see, I was at an event at Columbia University in New York, and some guy saw me filming. Nobody knew who I was. And he yells, Tim Pool is a fascist or something like that. And a bunch of people start looking around trying to figure out who's Tim Pool. So you know what I did? I looked around too. I was like, who are they, who are they talking about? It's certainly not me. And they couldn't figure it out. And they eventually pointed to the wrong person. And some guy gets in the face of this journalist yelling out, he's the problem or something. And the guy's like, Wait, I don't understand what's happening. And then finally the dude goes, no, him, and like points to me. And I still tried playing it down. But then some other people recognized me and they all started yelling at me. It was really funny because some chick went up to the school administrator and started making up crazy lies about me, like literally off the top of her head, saying that I was a known provocateur who was, you know, uh, secretly filming people and sending the information to violent groups. It's like just totally made up. And when I, when I, when I say made up totally, like you can argue she was being hyperbolic or exaggerating to extreme degree to try and make it seem like I was a bad person because I'm a journalist, but she didn't know who I was. So she ended up standing there all confused and no one else knew who I was. So they eventually just didn't care either. When one person starts a chant, everyone just looks wherever they point and chants and nobody knew who I was. So I actually had my press card because this was, I think it was like shortly after I left uh, ABC and I had multiple press cards and I just showed the administrator. I'm like, I'm so sorry. I have no idea what they're talking about. I'm just a journalist. And they were like, don't worry about it. You're cool. These people are nuts. Okay. They're just angry people who have no idea what they're talking about. 
And that brings me to the protest of the MTA. You want to complain about the MTA and the problems it's facing? Take your complaint to Ocasio-Cortez, who cost the city massive amounts of tax revenue by protesting against Amazon, and that money would have gone to fund the train system. More importantly, I don't understand how they're going to pour glue into these turnstiles or complain about the cost when it's literally publicly funded. You as the public are already taxpayer funding this, and they're already struggling to maintain it as it is. If anything, they need to increase the cost. The problem is if they make it too expensive, then people can't use it. The revenue goes down. They're in a tight spot. They need more money. The MTA is failing. Thank you, AOC, for taking those jobs away. They're not getting it. Making it free will just make it cease to exist. These people don't seem to understand that. The Daily Mail reports masked anti-cop protesters storm Grand Central during rush hour and vandalize subway stations across New York in massive demonstration against $2.75 fares and police on trains. They say roughly 500 protesters convened at Grand Central on Friday night, holding signs that read cops out of MTA. Two seventy-five is not worth human life. That's true. And so there's a concern that uh, I, I think the story actually has to do with someone actually getting. No, I don't think anybody died in New York City. But, uh, so here we go. Here we go. They say early this month, New York's attorney general, Letitia James, launched an investigation into whether the N- NYPD was targeting communities of color in fare evasion. Let me just tell you right now. Sometimes, yes, 100 percent. There are cops that are racist. They should be called out when they do that. More importantly, however, they target high crime areas, poverty, breeds crime. So if you have historically impoverished communities, the police will police there because they're poor and it results in crime. The problem I have with these people is they're surface level activists. They don't think about the real cause. So they do things like this. But then you have the same problem with the with extremists on the other side who are racists who think it's not poverty. It's literally race. It's not. It's poverty, period. I know because I grew up in a mixed area with white people who were crackheads, too. I, under, I got to see people of all races. And on the other side, to the left, I also got to experience police abuse and brutality. And how does that make sense? Well, I guess technically I'm a minority. But I had friends who were white, who, who, who dealt with police abuse. It doesn't matter, okay? Poverty doesn't know, well, I should say, for the most part, it's not about your race or gender. It's about whether or not you live in a nice enough place with a fancy enough home and you have the means to defend yourself in court. That's the sad reality. Let's read. They say New York police have made multiple arrests at Grand Central Terminal as droves of protesters took to the station to speak out against increased cop presence for the city subway system. Besides the action at Grand Central, protesters also vandalized station walls across the city and glued machines where commuters need to swipe their train cards to access turnstiles. Pro- turnstiles. Protesters also put up locks on station doors, allowing multiple people access to train platforms without having to pay the uh, 275 fare. Various actions took place on Friday during the evening rush. I can't show you some of the photos that have been published because they're really, really gross. In fact, I probably can't even say them. Let's just say that humans took took some uh, refuse from other humans and applied them quite liberally to vehicles of the NYPD, if you get my drift. We can see here a bunch of photos. I just got to go back to the, the how hilarious it is. When I saw that video of Luke Rudkowski, like basically an anarchist, and they're surrounding him screaming fascist, which is the literal opposite of what the guy actually believes. It was just like watching a clown show. It was just that funny. They say some 1,400 police were dispatched to stations across the boroughs as, uh, as, a, well to, as, as a way to quell the protest. CBS New York reports there have been no reports of NYPD officers getting injured in the protests. Leaving Grand Central, protesters tried to continue their action at nearby Bryant Park, but police prevented the majority from entering the station there. We can see some of these signs, police and the trains. Still, some 100 activists managed to get access to the station at 6th Avenue, 6th Avenue and West 42nd Street and set off a green smoke bomb. The massive group then made its way south along Broadway, indicating they would be ending at Restoration Plaza in Beds, uh, Bedford-Stuyvesant in Brooklyn. Protest group Decolonize This Place had taken to Twitter on Tuesday to share a warning about their protests. The streets are ours. The trains are our, 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 ours. The walls are ours. The moment is ours, they said in the video. How will you and your crew build an FS up for FTP3 on J31? It's a mother effing movement. We got more. Uh, transit is a right. Listen, transit isn't a private corporation, okay? If they don't take fares, 
who will pay the people who maintain the system, build and repair the tracks and control the trains. Now, perhaps we'll get to a point where we we automate everything and those people lose their jobs, I guess, and then we can open the doors. But the problem is the transit system is falling apart. These people don't think about it. They're mad that liberal reformers can't actually get the job done fast enough. The solution is not to destroy the train system in response. It's falling apart. We actually need more money to fix it. Unfortunately, thanks to Ocasio Cortez, that tax revenue, tax revenue never came. Carlos says, I'm really uh, proud of this city. Public transportation should be free and cops should not be patrolling our trains and buses. Well, interestingly, last time I was in LA, I'm pretty sure they use an honor system for the train system. I think DC does. A lot of places do the honor system. So what happens is, uh, and it may have changed in Los Angeles. I haven't been there. Uh, I haven't lived there in a long time. You just walk in. There, there are turnstiles, but there's no, it's free. You just walk past it. You buy a ticket, put it in your pocket. And then when you'll get off the train, sometimes there will be cops waiting and they want you to show their ticket. There's a bunch of ways that people trick the cops. They'll do things like they'll get one of those charge cards and then just, I, I don't know, maybe accidentally didn't swipe it or something. What some people would do is they would put 20 bucks on those tap cards. And then when they left the train, the cop would ask you to scan it to see if you actually used it. And if it showed that you didn't, they'd say something like, look, there's money on it. I, I must have just missed, not like read it when I tapped it. I'm sorry. And the cops usually let you go. But oftentimes they catch people, they ticket them, they arrest them. And so what happens is people get off the train or this is how it used to be. And one person would go scout, like look up the stairs, see if the cops were there and then signal to their buddies who would jump back on the train to get to go to another train station where they can get off where there are no cops. Anyway, I think I don't know how L.A. supports it, but I guess L.A.'s transit system is very, very different. I think New York has like 40 something train lines. The Daily Mail says just moments before the protest took place, NYPD chief of uh, department Terrence Monahan shared that the stations had been vandalized and that police were anticipating the protests. This morning, a group of individuals vandalized subway stations. He said, we believe the same individuals will attempt to disrupt the evening commute in the subway by causing disorder, endangering commuters, and even attempt, even attempting to physically assault our officers. It will not be tolerated. A woman recently fell on the tracks and lost her legs. The last thing we need are people running around vandalizing and spray painting. The last thing New York needs, I don't live there anymore, is a tiny, tiny fraction of individuals who demand free stuff, disrupt life for everyone else and the people who are working. Now I get it. It is a challenge when you can't afford to take the train and you want to find a way to find a job. It it is rough. It is. But you're not entitled to any of this. Okay. It's not a right. You can't make a, you, you can't make tangible objects produced by other people and their labor a right because then how do you give it to literally everyone? If you have, like, you know, I think like they talk about healthcare being a human right. Okay. Full stop. If you need a doctor to save your life and everyone has a right to that doctor, how is it possible that doctor can help everyone? Even if you have 10,000 doctors, you'll still have more non-doctors. How can those doctors literally service everyone and save their lives? It can't be done. So you want access to certain things as a right. We'll have a discussion about it. But the idea that all health care is a right is just absurd. Health care, as much as I want to make sure and I'm willing to sacrifice to save your or anyone else's life, we still have to recognize resources are finite. So you take a look at even public systems. Transit is a right, but you still have to contribute to that system to keep it alive. They can't tell you you're not allowed to use the transit system because of certain characteristics about you, but you still got to pay because someone's driving that train. Someone's working that station. The, the, the funniest thing about this protest is they're literally protesting a public service already. And my understanding is that New York and many other cities have reduced fare options for people who can't afford it. Unfortunately, everyone's got to pitch in. You know, I tell people, I'll put it this way. Imagine you have a creek, there's a creek behind your property and it's, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not comfortable to cross because you'll get wet. It's wide enough. Let's say it's 10 feet. Nobody's going to jump it. So you decide you will build a small bridge. That bridge can hold several people's weight and it allows you and your family to get across. You built it, you paid for it, you did all that stuff. All of a sudden, people find the convenience of your bridge and start going on your property and crossing over it. So now the bridge is facing wear and tear. But they say, but so what? The bridge is already here. And you say, yes. But now with everyone walking on it, it's slowly starting to fall apart. I have to fix it. They won't. 
Once the bridge finally collapses, they say, oh, no more bridge. And they stop coming. And now you have no bridge. Should you have a right to secure what you made? Let's say you and all of the people in your neighborhood put the, built the bridge together. And every day you pitch in a little bit to make sure that bridge is there. And then other people not from your community find the convenience of that bridge and start using it, demanding it be free because it exists. And then the bridge collapses and then they stop coming because it's not convenient anymore. You can't let people steal from the public. These Antifa protesters and far left aren't talking about protecting the poor. They're talking about stealing from the public. It's funny. It's paradoxical. It should be free. Why for you while we pay for it? We built this together and we're even being nice to you when you don't pay taxes to only pitch in 275. If you can't do it, I'm sorry. But if we let everyone come on, there would be no train for everybody. Have you considered getting a bike? You can get cheap bikes. I know it's not easy either. And I feel for people who are poor and can't afford it. I absolutely do. And I think the police should probably not be as heavy handed as they've been. That's fine and fair to say. But instead, they come in and destroy property. They threaten people, they insult them, and then they complain that they're the victims. Sorry, I'm not interested in playing a game like this. So let's just wrap up and see uh, what, what, what eventually happened. We'll get the final thoughts on this. Look, it says poverty is not a crime. Make the MTA free. Listen, nothing's stopping you from walking across the free bridges in New York. When I lived in Brooklyn, I would purposefully ride my bike or even walk several miles to Manhattan because it was, it was good for me. It was healthy. I'd get up early and be like, I really need to walk. So I'm going to walk across the bridge. And it was like a two, two or three mile walk. And it would take me a little while, but it felt good to get exercise. I didn't need to get on the L train. I could just walk. So you want to talk about people. You want to talk about, you know, what should be or shouldn't be free. The Manhattan Bridge, the Williamsburg Bridge, the Brooklyn Bridge, they are all free. But if you want a magical machine to carry you from one point to another, the, the, the labor has to be paid for. So guess what? The bridges exist. And even though it's the taxpayers repairing them, they still let you use it for free. Isn't this system great? You're standing on the shoulders of giants with roads beneath your feet that you don't have to pay for. Congratulations. You shouldn't get the trains for free. The streets are available to you, and so are the bridges, and maybe you'll just have to walk. I'll leave it there. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. at youtube.com slash Timcast. It's my main channel. as a different channel, and I will see you all there.